for me, I'm never more happier when the market's down right? because this is the time to build. This is the time to yeah. have t you know, real time with people and to build relationships yeah. and to look at the right deal flow and to get rid of any type of loose hands, right? The thing is that you really have to be quick to execute, but yeah. you have to be long-term in your vision. Yeah. Like, yeah. and you have to set up, like there was so many of these pooling yeah. groups, right? And they all called themselves funds and they were totally yeah. unregulated, right? They were yeah. breaking the law on what they were doing. They had no Such ethics. Yeah. And it's like, do you know what? When the tide goes out and you guys get taken out, good luck to you. There's a really big difference between being tech savvy and being smart and then actually running running a company and yeah. I, th I think that at SVK Crypto we really have that down well because we understood in order to be in this business with a 10 year view yeah. that you have to have that ability right you have to structure you have to have processes yeah. um, and it's something that takes up a lot of time and the ROI is not necessarily like it's not blatantly obvious right you know what I mean so yeah. for me I'm never more happier when the market's down, right? Because this is the time to build. This is the time to yeah. have t you know, real time with people and to build relationships yeah. and to look at the right deal flow and to get rid of any type of yeah. loose hands, right? So one is Bubble-O, so that became Nova now. Right. Uh, it's, uh, I've been running that for about four years, four and a half years. That's an AI company. Right. It's been out of joint, ven uh, joint venture with IBM. Right. That was a discovery app. And we ended up developing what, we didn't want to create a token that held value onto itself like Bitcoin. Instead we developed data marketplace. And why did you need the token in the first place? I mean, the business has been running for several yeah, for years. Me. You've yeah. raised capital. Uh, was it generating cash? We had my, very minimally monetized it. Did we you had. do that via an airdrop model? Or did you just do that for kind of friends and family? No, so we, we did the private sale. We haven't implemented it. And, uh, and what token were you using? Was it an ERC20 token? It's just a raise. Oh, it's I mean, just we're a not raise. Actually, we haven't built it, that, the, that part yet. Okay. Right? So yeah. that money that you raised was for equity? No, tokens. Okay, tokens. Yeah. But then private did you sale. issue a token? No, not yet. Okay, it was so. It a private sale. It was a promise to issue a token. So, we built okay, it. so just to be clear, you yeah. raised over $7 billion. $7.2 million, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the investors haven't yeah. received anything as yet. No as equity, yet. No. no tokens. They promised okay. their okay. token bonus. And yeah, it was like the private sale structure, right? Okay. How can I be of help? Well, so what, what, what do you need from SVK Crypto in London? We do like EOS. Okay. One of our top leading currency. We haven't picked a protocol yet. Okay. When you give it some thought and you're looking for the right protocol, um, yeah. we hope that you choose I mean, we, EOS IO. EOS is number one on our list. Okay. But I think you got to listen. This happens yeah. to us all the time. Like, hey, we'll build on EOS if you'll give us the money. Yeah. And for, I mean, to build first. well, absolutely. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. that's first and foremost. But second yeah. of all, not, not in you particular. Yeah. But I always say this to other people saying, yeah. why don't you just pick the protocol that's best for your project? And if you're looking for something that's free, fast and scalable, yeah. and you're going with an ERC-20 token and you're based on Ethereum, yeah. that might be a bit, a bit difficult ERC to do. ERC wouldn't work for us. No, I know that. Yeah. And also, there's a charge and there's gas and it's, yeah. not, it's not the optimal type protocol for what you're doing. But I think when you get there, mm -hmm. if you need any help, I'm more than happy to introduce you to mm -hmm. um, some of the developers, yeah. um, some of our advisors that all have a really, really, really great uh, C++ experience and also have developed and built. I think we're there right now. Okay. We're ready to execute. I mean, I've been doing all this biz dev and M&A for the last couple okay. of weeks. So, so, if you would like me to help you out yes. in order to make that choice see us, yeah. I'd be more than happy to open up my address book on that. Yeah. That up and then we'll take it from there. Awesome. You know, if it's something that you're going to yeah. do, then...
My name is Charles Story. I will be your host in the next 15 minutes. We're coming live from the Shangri-La Hotel, Santa Monica, California. So let's get down to business. Oh, hold on, hold on. You know that I love these intros, especially when you're around the world in different places. But tell me that again. Where exactly are we? We are at the Shangri-La Hotel, opposite Venice Beach. Here in Orange County, California, man. California, L.A., yeah? Flew into LAX, and it's just wonderful <laughs> to be here with yourself, our main man, Marco, behind the camera, and the rest of the core team, Hugh and Mark, and I can't really wait for this little summary that we've got coming up for what we've been doing and who we've met. Oh, yeah, man. Well, uh, first of all, how do you feel? Phenomenal. You feel good? I feel great. You look good. You look pretty. Oh. You look. You look very relaxed. You look very. You look tanned. You got that California glow <laughs> on you. <laughs> a California dreaming, man. You know what? I've, I've been to a few places in the states, dude. And I tell you what, LA's been my favorite. Like I've had a phenomenal time here. I wasn't expecting LA, and it's my first time, and I've been all over the U.S. But I wasn't expecting LA to be just so beautiful, and especially oh. Santa Monica, right, right down Oof. on the beach. I mean, the oh. weather's been awesome. It's such a difference and change coming out of London, which we're now coming into winter. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I'm kind of asking myself, especially today, going, why don't we live here? Yeah, man. It's kind of going from the, the, uh, the winter gear to the shorts, you know what I mean? It's kind of going back a season a little bit. And the lifestyle here is amazing. Like, everyone's happy. You know, everyone's kind of hanging out, chilling. I mean, it's, it's a different vibe to the kind of the snappy culture in London to get well, stuff done. Well, listen, I, you, you and I both know I love London. I really love the heartbeat <laughs> of London. But I'll tell you what, now that I've come to L.A., wow, I mean, this, is, this <laughs> has been great. So uh, why don't we uh, give a little summary? Uh, why don't we give a little bit of insight? Why don't we communicate to our community what actually we've been doing here? So maybe you kind of want to take it back to well, let's Tuesday. start at the beginning. Right at the beginning. Right at the beginning. Like dot zero. <laughs> like, Genesis block like, number one. Like Genesis block number one, okay. dude. Like stepping off the plane. That's how far back we're going to take it, dude. Let's go. Let's go, man. So after, after going, what was, how long was the flight? Was it 11 hours or 11 and a half hours? Uh, I can't remember, man. It was, it was pretty It was a brutal. long flight. Um, after rocking, rocking up to LAX, we, we rented uh, what, what is known here as an SUV. In England, that would be like a, an estate car, right? But here it's an SUV. It's a huge automobile. I mean, the thing looks bulletproof. So we got in that. And it, like the traffic, dude, that's the first thing that I thought about. How ridiculous is the traffic here? You think London's bad? Come here. I mean, we, we traveled 12 miles. It took us 40 minutes, and that was quick. So, you know, we came straight down to Santa Monica. We checked straight into the Shangri-La Hotel, and we pretty much kicked it off right from then. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we touched down here. Um, first thing we had to do, right, is just get, a, get a, an idea of where we are, where we're at. And right opposite the hotel, so right opposite where we are at the minute, you have a cliff face, and you have the beautiful beach. I mean, the beach is just so long. It's like, what, what would you say, a couple of hundred meters? Uh, of in, actual in, sand. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's beautiful. Yeah. It's really, really nice. It's very, very picturesque. Oh, it's beautiful. But the first thing we had to do when we touched down was hit up our boys at Everpedia. That's right, yeah. And uh, maybe you just want to give like a real brief summary uh, to our listeners, to our community um, with regards to Everpedia. What exactly is it? Give me, give me that one line. Give me, the, give me the elevator top line, 100 foot view point <laughs> down summary. Make it simple for me. Break it down. <laughs> Well, Everpedia is, well, the name itself, let's start with the name. So, Everpedia stands for Everyone's Encyclopedia. That's where the name came from. Now, Everpedia itself is a decentralized Wikipedia as well. Now, what that gives us, well, the, the, the content creator, the ability to do is create cool content, but that to be verified by the community itself. So, the content and the information that you look at on Everpedia is correct. Unlike Wikipedia, where you have no content control on there and no one really fact checks it. And they have a small team, but there's a lot of information there on Wikipedia, so it's hard to fact check everything. So with Everpedia, they go for more of a community approach where everyone and anyone can fact check it and get rewarded in IQ tokens, which is the native token. But what's really interesting is um, we, we, I was actually bummed up. Hotel, we got a suite right by the beach. So of course I invited Sam, who's the president and one of the co-founders of Everpedia, and Suchet, who's also is the COO and also a co-founder of Everpedia. They came down, they were hanging with us in the suite. We did a really cool podcast on Tuesday. If you haven't listened to it already, check it out. Um, getting to know Everpedia is the title of that, and we had a lot of fun with those guys, kind of getting their vibe and their feel and their view and their insight, because apart from being top-class dudes, 
they have an amazing level of insight, not only into EOS, but the entire space. So any opportunity we get to hear that, we take well, it. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad I'm glad that you summed it up actually so eloquently. I couldn't have done a better job myself. They are a token which is currently trading. It is IQ, is the ticker symbol for yeah. that token. I think they're trading just under one cent right now. Um, on Tuesday, which was our first day here, um, they came down to Charles's room. Charles managed to, I wouldn't say got a suite, I'd say hustled a suite more <laughs> like it. Uh, Charles has an awesome room here and it permitted us to uh, do the podcast with the guys from Everpedia. Um, wow, I mean, it was a great podcast and it was just before we went out. <laughs> and they're such an impressive group. And we've met Sam before, yeah. um, and I thought that um, they, uh, they were really insightful in talking about Everpedia, and um, I'm yeah. very excited about that project. And you're right, um, of course, they have executed on the EOS IO protocol, so um, it's right in our strike zone. Well, as his nickname is, and his uh, Twitter handle is, he's known as Persian Zucks. Hmm. Persian Zucks. <laughs> so, As a um, Persian Zuckerberg. <laughs> after uh, executing the podcast and having a few drinks, what do we do then, Charles? Oh man, we got hungry, dude. So we, obviously we had to eat. So we went down, um, we, like not even far away, literally three minutes from my hotel, a place called Boa Steakhouse. Yeah. I recommend it to anyone that's in Santa Monica. Check it out. And um, after ordering pretty much half the menu, and I, I like you forget because you're in England, the portion sizes are a lot yeah, smaller. Yeah, they were big. I mean, geez, like the portions were huge. We couldn't even finish them. But halfway through, I looked to my left and I saw a familiar face. And um, I was like, I, I think that's Dr. Dre. Who did you ask? I think I, I was like, hey, Shane, <laughs> Shane was sitting next to me. I was like, hey, Shane, is that Dr. Dre? And he looks over and he's like, yeah, that's Dre. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did not forget about Dre. I took one look at him, and uh, after being a, a big NWA fan, um, you know, after being a you know big fan, of what he did with Beats yeah. by Dre, selling it to Apple, after recently seeing obviously the uh, most am amazing film straight out of Compton, and then the Defiant Ones oh. with Jimmy Iovine, oh. which is also you know an absolute legend of the game. I took one look and went, Charles, that's Dr. Dre. So, uh, and the cool thing was that we gave Sam a present before we went out of a t an SVK Crypto T-shirt. And that was something that we gave to him, and we love to give out to people because we love to well, he, show everyone our brand. And he actually put it on. He put it on straight away. He put he, it on straight he wore, away. He wore it out. He wore uh, it out. He wore it out. And it was only it was only when he came back and showed me the picture where it had the SVK Crypto T-shirt with him and Dr. Dre that I figured, like I remembered he was wearing the T-shirt because he, he always dresses in kind of dark colors anyway. I, I didn't think about it at the time. Well, uh, the guys, uh, rightly so, went right over to Dre. They've been massive hip-hop fans. Uh, <laughs> and the Everpedia guys got a photograph, and when they came back, yeah, we were really... Uh we were really happy for those guys. Oh, yeah. We were then joined by Timothy Lewis. Uh, some of you may oh, know yeah. Timothy Lewis. Um, he uh, is a, a real thought leader in the space. Um, Timothy uh, has done lots of different things. He's worked for an advisor for the DNA Fund, which yeah. is also in LA. Uh, he's also very much involved in, in Liberty Block, Block Producer, and they've also got a venture capital and hedge fund type strategy called Iki Guy, um, and that's with uh, some of the guys may know Travis, who's his partner, um, who's ex- uh, Point seventy two uh, portfolio manager who worked for Stevie Cohen from from SAC Capital. So Travis came down. Sorry, Tim. Yeah, Tim came down for some food. Yep. Um, and he's always kind of been a and as the ever pity guys a shaman type display. You know what I mean? He's you he, when he when he walks into a room, you know. He, he I don't know what it is. I can't really describe. Do you know his what I was? Style. Do you know what I was calling him last night? Oh, the Lion King. <laughs> no, no, a young Mel Gibson. <laughs> Let's see what you're Mel Gibson. A better looking version of Mel Gibson. What I what I realized it was when I looked at my watch, which I hadn't set back to oh. Um, oh, LA yeah. time. Um, it was now something like nine o'clock in the morning. So we had, I think we'd been up for maybe 26 hours. So seven seven hours straight. Yeah, yeah. So I think after kind of having a drink, we decided to <laughs> uh, to bow out of there and kind of come home, and and we did, and uh, we 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 crashed. The only unfortunate thing was I woke up at four o'clock in the morning wide awake. Oh. <laughs> yeah. oh, Wednesday. So uh, anyway, we rolled. We rolled into Wednesday morning. Uh, woke up early. Uh, met everybody down. Had a meeting back in Charles's room. Uh, yeah. We bounced to the gym. I think a few of the guys went for a run. And then uh, what did we do? What did we do Wednesday morning? Oh man, we'll give a big shout out first of all to Ruby's, which is an amazing yeah. Australian cafe. Come breakfast bar. I mean that place. 
has uh, it will change your life and change your perspective <laughs> on breakfast. I don't know what they do there, but everything's just cooked to perfection. It was good. It was good. And I don't know if it's the sun shining down, the LA sun. I don't know what it is, but everything just tastes a bit nicer over here. Really, really nice. I think we're being uh, fooled into this. Sure, sure. So uh, <laughs> Wednesday then started to roll on. Wednesday started to roll on. I mean, we've had a really busy schedule here. So with Wednesday itself, we actually headed down to Ikigai offices, um, which Tim, as you just mentioned, is one of the co-founders of, along with Travis. Really interesting office space. And we actually had a really cool tour. So big shout out to Tim for taking the time to show us around the intricacies of the Ikigai office and well, all it, the people It there. actually reminded me a little bit of Jeremy Gardner's uh, The Crypto House in San Francisco. Yeah, the Crypto um, Castle, yeah. Yeah, the Crypto Castle, that's yeah. correct. Um, with the guys here, Tim and uh, the rest of the Iki guys, they have an, an, an awesome uh, office pad, uh, working space, and they have lots of different projects all under one roof. But their hospitality um, and uh, their their level of detail mm. and uh, their time taken really to show us around. And I know that we have some amazing footage, which will also be kind of yeah. coming out of, of yeah. that day. Um, great to meet all those guys there and to sit down. And we also saw the project uh, Byzantine. Byzantine which is a, Labs, man. Yeah, Byzantine Labs, which is something they've been working in, in internally, uh, which helps developers almost like kind of templates in order to further your development creation on EOS. So that was really, really cool. Yeah, so, yeah, they're really focused on DEXs, which obviously is going to be a big thing. And at this current point in time, there's many challenges there. So it's really going to be really interesting when they really push that forward. But I, what I found really interesting at, at Ikigai, right, was the fact that when he's showing us around, you'd move into the first section of the office, have a look around, you meet some people, phenomenal. You move up to the next section, and there's like a, a room behind somewhere, and there's like a room full of developers. Like, you had no idea they were there. And they're like, oh, hey, man, what's happening? Yeah, yeah, all cool, cool, yeah, cool. And then you go somewhere else, and there's like people everywhere. Um, I felt the level of focus and the level of knowledge mm. uh, with regards to... Uh, Tim and, and the Ikigai office and uh, Byzantine Labs. I thought they were really sharp guys, and uh, I thought they were, you know, r really, you know, real professional in what they were doing. Yeah. So um, anyway, that was that was you know a great afternoon spending some time with with those guys, and then after that we. Uh, we left them and we came down into town and we ended up going to see the guys at Everpedia for more of a formal meeting. Yeah, I mean that was really fun. Like, really fun. And just to kind of put things into perspective, right by the beach, the Everpedia guys have an office. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. It's crazy. And from the office space itself, when you walk in, they have a balcony overlooking the beach. And we met so many cool people there. So big shout out to the Crypto Twins who were yes. there, who were developing some really intri interesting software. Yeah. And you know what they're doing actually for the hackathon, which is coming up this weekend? They're creating a USB stick with already programmed in software. So to help developers when they put in the USB stick, they don't have to download it. Wow. Right? Okay, and they've no. got like a hundred of these that they've manually done. Wow. I didn't know that. Um, yeah. Apart from the crypto twins, uh, we also met all the Everpedia team, which uh, you know, we see a lot of projects and uh, we see uh, usually in, in every project there's one leader, there, there, you know, there's, one, there's one visionary or there's mm. one you know, very technical, um, advanced and, and, and experienced. I thought at the Everpedia office, every person that I met was like that. Every person was special, every person was knowledgeable, every person um, was already up to speed, um, mm. they were acclaimed, they were, had exits, um, they had tech. Um, I just thought they were you know, such an impressive and such a welcoming group of people. What did you think? Uh, I, you know what, I was blown away, and the reason why I was blown away is because everyone there had a purpose, and they had a culture. And a culture is something that is really important, and I think it's overlooked in a lot of different startups and ICOs that we see. But the culture they had there was very supportive of one another. I mean, it's almost caveman-like, right? They would chant. <laughs> like, when someone did something good, they would chant your name, and everyone in the office would join in. <laughs> but uh, everyone, everyone was like just so on the ball with what's going on and how to build this out. Everyone was singing off the same hymn sheet. Yeah, very much. Refreshing. Yeah. Very refreshing. And there wasn't anything, there wasn't any downside that I saw. And a lot of different teams, you normally have someone there who doesn't blend in well or is a little bit questionable with his experience or what he really brings to the party. Everyone at Everpedia brings their fair share and more. Not only insight and experience, but just the level of understanding of what's currently going on. And everyone's got their own different opinion, which is great. Like at Everpedia, everyone's got their own view. And it's not like the view of the company 
it's the view of the people within the company yeah, and everyone has a different that. view um so then anyway after that i think it was about 6 30 on wednesday yeah um, we were invited back to uh, Timothy Lewis and, and the Liberty Block guys and uh, Ikigai. Ikigai Ventures. Uh, they were having like a, a little kind of meetup, um, a little kind of a community affair. Um, and they were um, having uh, like a little bit of a rooftop party, which is unbelievable. In the house that they're in, they have a beautiful rooftop terrace and they had a whole setup with some music and presentations <laughs> and and some great people. So we ended up going back there. Um, Travis, who's who's Timothy Lewis's partner, who I've already spoke about, uh, presented. Travis is a ex hedge fund guy and uh, very switched on, um, very slick, um, and he really kind of talked um, us through you know the investment case of why they want to be allocating yeah. capital to crypto. And then of course uh, Timothy got up and he spoke about um, what Timothy does, and that's all building and dev. He actually said, you know, he likes building and breaking stuff, which I thought was kind of cool. <laughs> and we also met some other great people at that event. Um, yeah. I mean, I thought I thought the level of knowledge and experience mm. that was at that meetup and event or party, whatever call it, whatever you want, um, was was unreal. Everybody that I spoke to uh, really knew what they were they were talking about. So. I think that went down to kind of half nine ten, um, mm -hmm. and then we swung back into town, and we ended up uh, hooking up with um, all the Everpedia team for a really nice dinner. Yeah, absolutely, and the crypto twins. So we we roll back into town. <laughs> um, so anyway, <laughs> uh, after actually getting some sleep and resting all night, um, we woke up uh, earlier again this morning, yeah. which is now we're on Thursday. Thursday. And maybe you want to tell us a little bit about what we did on, on Thursday. Yeah, sure. I mean, we kicked really, we kicked off the day with a, with a nice big gym workout. But we had a good, really good call of Crypto Kitties. I mean, Ben, he's been on the show prior. Um, it's a really great interview that he did. And he was talking about really their recent fundraising round of $15 million, where they've had Andreessen was Horowitz. That, was that 1.5 or 5.0? Five, 1.5. Five. And they've had Andreessen and Horowitz in the deal, Samsung Next, Google Ventures. And it was really interesting because CryptoKitties was seen as a fad, a phase, and it was done. But really what CryptoKitties represented was the ability to digitize offline assets as we know it and digitize them and be able to trade them and have an exchange type service for that as well. And um, I think that's the potential that they hold and they already have the basic structure for that with CryptoKitties. Now, it doesn't mean that they're investing naturally into CryptoKitties. It means that they're investing into the idea of digitizing offline assets first time in history to be able to do that which is super exciting so it's really interesting to hear what he says and they're obviously really interested in their community build out here in london and we're obviously going to help with that um, and they're currently uh, on ethereum right because obviously i, I believe they brought down the ethereum <laughs> yeah. network previously i think it was like thirty-seven thousand transactions over a seven day period and yeah. uh, there was a lot of unconfirmed transactions and capacity of the network was 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 maxed out at 100 percent well let's tell how it is they crashed the network Right, so uh, it'll be interesting to see <laughs> like what not even on. have a lot of usage, by the way. Well, yeah, I, su I suppose, you know, it kind of it kind of depends. But anyway, uh, Benny is uh, <laughs> definitely a big fan of the show. Huge uh, fan. Listens a lot, and he's very active as well on, on all our social medias across, across the board. So um, that's excellent to have him. Um, and then after the call with Benny, um, what do we do? Oh, we met a really special friend. He's a, he's a very close friend to us here at SVK Crypto. He actually drove all the way down from, I think it was like Southern California, or like, I'm not too sure my Californian areas, but, or the Orange County areas, right? Because the Orange County, then you have California. That's right. Right? And he, he drove down two hours to hang out of us. And, and um, what respect. we did- well, yeah, Respect. Yeah, respect. Res respect. You know respect. who you are, big shout out. Respect. <laughs> respect. But I think what's most interesting is what we did with him. Yeah. yeah? yeah. And and we, we wanted to do something a little bit different. We wanted to embrace a bit of the flavor here. So around, around here, we haven't told them this, around on the streets, there's like scooters everywhere you go. Electric just like, scooters. Just dumped, yeah. like just literally just like dropped off in random locations. And you download an app and there's a few different companies that do this and you go up and you scan it and it's an electric scooter and you just go off, Whoosh, you whiz off, it's amazing. So myself, Shane, and, and our, our, our mysterious friend, we um, we hit the hit the beachfront along the path that goes right along the beach, right next to the sand, for about what was it like three, four miles? Yeah, probably about an hour and a half. It was it was excellent. Uh, we ha we had a real a kind of exploring adventure after day, uh, getting on a scooter and going all the way down and just seeing all <laughs> the sights and, and taking it in. So uh, yeah, no, that was that was cool, really that was, cool. That was awesome. They go about twenty miles an hour, by the way. So we were, <laughs> we were like maxing those things out everywhere. <laughs> 
<laughs> and we're, we're seeing how fast they could go. Well, listen, I, I think what's really important now, um, we're, we're back at the Shangri-La. We're having a great time. We're having a quick drink. Then we've got some plans this evening, which we'll go into a later stage. But we're really excited for the EOS Hackathon. The real reason we're here. Yeah. We're really excited to be part of that. We've met so many interesting people who are going to be participating, mentoring, judging yeah. who are going to be part of this. It's going to be huge. It's going to be big. Yeah. There's also lots of speaking arrangements that I'm committed yeah, to, yeah, yeah. which is going to be great. And maybe we'll update that to you um, on Friday or, or Saturday. Um, I think what uh, we're really looking forward to is actually seeing a lot of people that are coming mm. to the hackathon. So mm. do you want to kind of give me some names of who's uh, who's present? I know Rob Finch from Cypherglass and from the Everything EOS podcast is going to be there. Also, Zach Gall. Yeah, sure. So you're kind of you're kind of talking about the mentoring side of things, and there's going to be a massive amount of talent there, including the Everpedia guys who are going to be mentoring, right? So they're going to be flying up. Rob Finch is going to be mentoring along with uh, Jay Chang, who's one of one of the one of the mentors who won the the uh, mentor prize over in Hong Kong. Yeah. There's going to be a wealth of talent there. But what's really interesting is the judges. So we have Dan Larimer who's going to be flying in. Yeah. We have Philip Rosedale. We have Mike Novogratz as another judge. We also have um, Margaret Elderman. She's going to be one of the judges. We have Mike Limpress, who's the chief policy officer at Coinbase. And Rob Judison, president at Block One. So, uh, yeah, it looks like an unbelievable lineup of um, you know, great people, you know, industry and thought leaders, um, and more, more importantly, friends and people that are part of our community. That's a wrap. And I got a bounce. Woo-hoo! Woo-hoo! <laughs> hey, let's do it. <laughs>